all right, let's decode the matrix. How do you think you're supposed to win the game of life, the human game that we play, if you don't understand the rules of the game and you don't understand the actual environments that you find yourself in? Today's video, we're going to talk about reality and the illusions that we find around us and how our mind and our perception and our belief system shapes our experience all around us every day. So what if I told you that for hundreds of years, probably more, there's been specific systems set up in place so that you don't know this information. Now it's definitely becoming more widespread and it's slowly starting to unlock, but I'm going to share with you something that a lot of people that have a lot of power don't want you to know. You see, there's a lot of illusions and a lot of false perceptions and lies that we believe reality to really be. And we're going to break all these things down. So I have some notes here I'm going to read through to help you understand this and to help guide this so I don't go too off track. But the question really is, you know, who are we? And what is this reality that we find ourselves in? It's the big question, right? Like how many people out there ask themselves, who am I? Where am I? And why am I here? Now, likely you're already one of these people because you're watching this video. But when we start to ask these questions, we start the awakening process. The awakening process is the process of understanding reality and understanding your place within reality. And the deeper that you understand that, the simpler life gets, the easier things become, and the more you can look at everything as simply a game. And thankfully, very grateful to have been able to dive deep into this over the last number of years and to be able to share with you here in this video because it served me in such a profound way. So I can't wait to share this with you. So there's specific systems set up in place so that you don't understand this information because it's easier if people don't know this. It's much easier if you're trying to control things, if you're trying to run the world, if you're trying to create a life where you're in power and everybody else follows rules, it's much easier to keep this information secret. Like it just is, like it's genuinely much easier to do that. And we really take for granted the fact that we're told this truth of reality. That's not really the truth. It's not true. So what are we told to believe? Well, we're told to believe that we live in a solid and physical world. It's a material world. Like everything is physical around you. And we're going to break this down. So stick with me. Everything has space between it, right? So that's another thing within the material world. And also that time is linear and that there's a past and there's a present and there's a future and all these things. So we're looking at time as like a linear perspective. That's what we're told to believe. And also everything that happens is just happening randomly. So things are just happening and, you know, it's just randomly happening. Things are happening here and things are happening here and it's all random and it's all chaotic. It's all over the place. That's what we're told to believe. And also that we are separate. Me and you are separate. There's another way to look at this that unlocks something profound in life within you that allows you to create your reality. And what I want to preface this with is that create your reality sounds nice, it sounds fluffy, it sounds inspiring. But when you are creating your reality, you are taking on new responsibility. Because it's much easier to believe that someone else is going to come and save you. Someone else is going to create reality for you, or someone's going to bring you the thing that you want in life, or that it's somebody else's fault that you're not where you want to be. So the create your reality term, which is something I stand by, I have a tattooed on my arm right here, to remind myself that I am the creator of my reality. But that comes with a large responsibility that I am fully solely responsible for my life. So I want to preface with that because create your reality can sound nice and inspiring. But what people forget about is the fact that there is so much responsibility behind that that is incredibly important to embrace. Because if that is the life that you want, you have to ask yourself, are you ready for that responsibility? Because if you're not ready for the responsibility, then you need to look at 
becoming more responsible and taking ownership over the things in your life that you're not taking responsibility over right now. Otherwise, you're better off going the path of thinking someone else is going to come and save you someday. Now, I don't recommend that path, but you're better off going that direction if you're not going to take responsibility. Okay, so let's find the truth. So physical reality, we live in a material world. Let's really break this down. Okay, if we look at you sitting in a chair, or the chair that I'm sitting in right now, we look at that. And we say, Okay, well, this chair is solid. If physical reality is an illusion, then how do I sit on this chair without falling through? Okay, well, it's the same thing in a virtual reality scenario where you're, you have the, you know, the VR goggles and you're going through and you're sitting down and you're maybe operating within a game in virtual reality games the characters don't fall through the chairs either but they're not in the physical world that we know they're in a virtual reality game but they sit on the chair and they don't fall through either so what's going on here like what's the what's the situation well the thing that holds this together is really the resistance that allows someone to sit in the chair is not physical resistance the resistance that i'm placing myself on the resistance between me and the chair it's not physical resistance it's electromagnetic resistance and electromagnetic resistance is made up of band of frequency a band of vibration that holds it together and we experience this as physical at least the way we define physical because and again all these words that we use are all labels and terms that we familiarize ourselves with but they all have mean different meanings based on our interpretations of them so words are simply going to be slightly different for you than they are for me so we have to be able to define well, what these things are so the physical that we're talking about is the physical world that we're looking at right now this bottle right here we would consider this physical this chair it's physical but that's our understanding of what physical is but the resistance between me and the chair that stops me stops me from falling through and just falling on the floor and then falling through that floor because there's no physical resistance is vibration and frequency that holds these holds this electromagnetic field together now another way to look at this is that when people experience things like ghosts so the classic idea of a ghost is a ghost can walk through walls you know just passed through or pops out somewhere and most people would say okay well that's impossible you know you can't walk through walls whatever immediately the limitation of belief comes out into play and it's like hey that's impossible right but based on our perception of reality keyword here being perception that's hard to believe like it's hard to believe that something can walk through walls because we can't walk through walls at least in this world that we find ourselves in right now but it can and when I say it, it could be a ghost, it could be anything. Whatever it is, it can walk through walls. As long as it's not on the same frequency as the wall itself, and it's not bound by the electromagnetic field, which is the wall, that resistance, that electromagnetic resistance, if it's a lower frequency than that, it can go through the wall. So... It's all frequency. And if we look at the famous quote from Nikola Tesla, if you want to learn the secrets of the universe, think in terms of energy, frequency, and vibration. And there's a reason for that. This guy changed the course of humanity. Same with Albert Einstein. And there's a reason for that. They talk about frequency. They talk about energy. So when we look at this, it's like we find ourselves in this virtual reality game. This virtual reality game that appears to be so real, but is it really real? That's the thing. So physical reality, if we just keep going down this rabbit hole of like, is this actually physical? Is it an illusion? Well, a great way to look at this is Wi-Fi, right? Wi-Fi that we experience that's, you know, runs the internet and allows us to access the internet. Well, Wi-Fi is simply a field of information. And what carries Wi-Fi? Well, radiation carries Wi-Fi. We don't experience Wi-Fi in a radiation format. We don't receive that information. That information is just hovering around. It's just around. We can't see it. It's not physical.
But then when we log on to our computer, we experience the information on a screen. And that's the only place where we see this information on a screen, on a computer. But before that, the information was just invisible to the naked eye. But when we log on to our screen and we go onto Google and we type in whatever site we're going to, we arrive at this place of information, but that has come from Wi-Fi. It has come from an internet connection that has been carried by radiation. So it went from an old form of just being information in the air that we can't see with the naked eye to this information that's now being presented on the screen. It changed its form. It changed its form, but how is it being carried? It's ca being carried by a certain frequency. The certain frequency carrying that allows us to experience that. So the computer has basically decoded the information from the Wi-Fi frequency into a new form that allows us to experience the internet. Think about that for a second. It has decoded information that we cannot physically see and now presents it on a screen in front of us so that we can experience it, see it, and it's the same way you're watching this video right now. You're just seeing it in one specific form. But what the computer has done, it's like a, it's a mechanism that has decoded what we can't see with the naked eye and put it on a screen. So it's important to know. The internet, the videos, the image, Google, social media, all these things, they can only be experienced on the screen, right? Or phones, the same thing, only experienced on the screen. It's the only place the internet, the internet actually looks like that. Everywhere else, the internet is basically like electromagnetic communication fields and systems and codes and ones and zeros and all these different Wi-Fi fields, again, that we cannot see with the naked eye. So we think about that for a second. Have you ever thought about where this actual screen comes from? The computer has decoded information that is out there and presented it to you here so you could consume it. But as human beings, we do the exact same thing. Because our mind is a computer. Our mind is a supercomputer. And we have senses. So we have um, touch, smell, taste, sight, and hearing. These are all our five senses. This, these five senses are the things that allow us to experience reality. Without these five senses, we can't experience reality. They're the thing that allows us to understand what's going on around us. But we also have these higher faculties like imagination, perception, intuition, memory, reason, and will. These are like the higher faculties that animals don't have that we have. Now, perception is the key one that we're going to be focusing on throughout this whole entire video, because this is the thing that shapes how we experience the world around us. So perception, we're going to get deeper into that later in this video, but I want to show you that we have these five senses and we have these higher faculties. Okay. So the senses and the higher faculties allow us to take in the information in our environment around us. We take in the information. There's information everywhere. Everything is information. And we decode this information from the cosmic energy field around us that comes from the, like the planetary system, the universe, everything around our solar system that we experience here on Earth. We decode this information using our higher faculties and our five senses. This is why when you lose one of your senses and you can't you know, smell or you can't see, you don't experience the same thing as you would if you had it, right? If you lose your sight, you, you can't experience the information that you can receive through the senses of the eyes. You, cannot, you can't do that. You can't use it because you don't have the decoder, which is your eyes, to be able to decode the information that you see around you, right? So when we look at like what happens here, right? It goes from quantum energy so the energy field, like the, the universe, like the, the energy that's within the solar system, within the planet, within Earth, all around us, that's everywhere. All these different frequencies and information. It's just not seen to the naked eye, but it's there. We take it in in our human body through our five senses and our higher faculties. Our brain and our mind decodes the information and gives us like 
a reality of on which we see it's going to be our perception now again we're going to get deeper into that later in this video but this is going to form our reality this is how we see things around us this is how you're watching this video right now now a question that comes up a lot is is the world made of atoms because atoms and particles if we look at the scientific method a lot of it is like okay well atoms and particles that's how everything's made up right if we look at this this is made of atoms and particles combined together but aren't they solid atoms and particles are they solid okay well that's what we assumed for a very very long time that things are solid so we live in a material world and things are really solid so you have an atom and there's a nucleus within it which is the like the core of it and you have the electrons that are just spinning around it that's the the atom and what it looks like and the atomic structure is basically like there's these electrons around the outside there's the nucleus in the middle and you have other things like protons and you have other things uh, that are again more i'm not an expert in this area but you have other things as well but the main thing to understand here is that what is in the space between the nucleus and the electrons and that was the question that many scientists were asking like what is the actual what's in between that where is what what's there right and then they started to go deeper into like what this means and they, they understood that all it was was black space and there's a great quote from ali sundamir i think i'm saying his name right um she was a writer inside the business insider around physics and space and things like that she said that if the nucleus of an atom were the size of a peanut the atom would be the size of a baseball stadium so the nucleus is the size of a peanut but the atom itself is the size of a baseball stadium like think about that that's one atom that's huge so what is the space between it's energy the space between it is energy and this brought us to this conclusion uh, based on science which was we're not necessarily living in a physical world a lot of it is energy 95 percent of it if not more is energy what's in the space so based on this understanding the world isn't solid but we have decoded it as solid so that we can experience it because if it wasn't solid then we wouldn't be able to experience it our mind decodes it as solid which means that it is 3d which means that we can experience it and if we look at what the basis of reality is it's really waveforms okay so waveform information the same as wi-fi everything is information we decode that waveform using our mind computer internal into the world around us external we think it's outside of us but we are actually the ones creating it in the first place we are interpreting the information the cosmic energy around us we're interpreting that through our five senses and our higher faculties through our mind which projects out and gives us the physical world around us and we're all doing that simultaneously so we're the ones creating it this is where create your reality really comes from but let's go deeper let's look at the observer effect which is a scientific experiment that was done with this new information this understanding okay so mainstream science has this perception of the observer effect and it states that until something is observed it is operating in wave form when it is observed only then does it appear as physical or solid okay but think about it this way this is an interesting thing to, to just contemplate whatever room you're in right now right whatever room you're in maybe you're in your room your kitchen maybe you're in somewhere else entirely but the room that you're in you are aware of the room that you're in you can look around and you can see the room around you you can see the walls and whatever else is going on in your room but there's likely another room beside this room how do you know that everything exists inside of that room while you're not there until you get there until you open the door and you look in and it's there like you can never really answer that question now you could say to somebody stand in that room while i stand in this room but they're the one observing it and you're the one observing this room so you could be like okay well that's real it's real because of the observer observing the waveform which becomes solid based on our supercomputer in our mind that projecting this reality 
back to us. It's an interesting thing to think about. So it appears physical. And there was a lot of different tests, the double slit test as well, that was a part of this, that showed this scientifically happening with particles of light. I have another video that breaks down some of those things as well. You can check that out somewhere around here. What's really interesting. And it really does become the question of like, if you leave your desk and you go into another room or maybe you go out, it's like, does this desk even exist? Does it actually physically exist until you observe it? You can't answer that question because you don't know because you'll always be either looking at it or someone else will be looking at it and observing it. So it's an incredible construct. Okay, let's just go a little bit deeper. So when you're using a computer, let's come back to this, right? When you're using a computer, the Wi-Fi that we talked about, it's in waveform. Like the information is out there, it's being carried by radiation. It's on a band of frequency, so it's there somewhere and it's operating in waveform. We don't see it. But then when we open up our computer, that waveform, that information travels through the waves, travels through the frequencies and shows up on our screen. So then we see it. It's old form, it was in basically waveform, the old form. A new form is now appears to be physical on screen, right? Well, the computer is physical, but the, the information that's on the screen is now presented to us in the way that is presented based on the developers, the people who coded the, diff the different things in the internet. So that's how we experience it. So it changes its form. But the same thing happens when we turn off the computer, shut down the computer, we close the computer, that information goes back into waveform. So the act of observing allows us to decode information that presents illusory physical reality, illusory being it's an illusion that we find ourselves in. So it really presents this illusion of physical reality around us, which is interesting. So how does this really work? Well, if we come back to what we talked about earlier, right? The five senses takes in information as well as our higher faculties, but we'll just focus on the five senses for now. So the five, sec uh, five senses of touch, you pick up something, you taste something, you smell something, you see something, you hear something, you pick up the information. That waveform that we experience, that we touch, that we, we see, we take in that information, the mind and the brain interpretates that information based on our perception and gives us a view of reality and it all happens faster than the speed of light like you, you can't even count it it's this happens really fast so think about that for a second all the information that you're taking in right now is coming through your five senses and your higher faculties and that information gets transformed through you and then through your mind and, and that projects into the world that you see around you so the old form of waveform changes into the new form. And if we think about the subconscious mind, just the mind, like the mind in general takes in so much information, but the subconscious mind is the thing that is processing all of this. So according to science, the mind is taking in roughly around 11 million pieces of information at any given second. But our conscious mind only processes 40 to 100, maybe more, it really depends on where you're at. You're taking in a tiny fragment of that information consciously to actually construct reality around us. So we're taking in all this information and we're processing through it and then we, we project our reality from that, which means that we're not at the mercy of life. We're actually the ones creating the life that we experience, even if we don't like it. This is what it comes back to. It comes back to responsibility. Even if we don't realize it and we don't like it, we're the ones creating it. So let's talk a little bit about now the quantum field. Because where does this information come from that we're talking about here? Well, this can be referred to as the cosmic Wi-Fi. It's another way of looking at it. An infinite place of possibility and probability and energy and just complete infinity. Within the quantum field, there's infinite possibilities. Anything could happen. All of these millions and trillions of different probabilities and possibilities that could happen. But we have a filter for the information that we receive because we can't receive all of the information, right? Like we said, the, the mind processes 11 million pieces of information every single second, but we only take on 40 to 100 
to construct the reality around us, which means that we have to have a filter. Otherwise, we would just be overloaded with information. We wouldn't be able to do that. We can't comprehend that. It would be too much. So we have to have a filter. So what is the filter? Well, the filter, if we look at it from the Wi-Fi perspective and the, t and the computer, so the Wi-Fi comes from here. So the Wi-Fi is in waveform. And then you have the computer, which is the new form, right? It changes form. In between that is a filter, which means that a filter can be looked at like Google or YouTube or Instagram or whatever website. There has to be a filter so that you can go to a place to search information and then go to a, another place that has that specific information. It's constantly filtering. Otherwise, we wouldn't be able to actually find anything. It would just be this massive ocean of the internet. And even the internet that we can access is only accessing a very small part of the internet. Very, very small part. There's so much information out there. So this works the same way for humans. So the same way that our excitement and our emotional state and our passions and our perceptions determine the information that we receive from the quantum field. So the things that we're excited about, the level of excitement we feel, the emotional state that we are operating from, the frequency that we're holding, our perception of reality and our place within that and our self-image and our worldview and everything that comes with that, that is going to be the filter for the information that we receive within the world, within reality, that creates a reality that we experience as physical. And this is all coming from what's called, or can be known as the quantum field. Some people call it, call it cosmic energy, the, the universe, the energy that surrounds all of us. So the information filter allows us to shape our reality, right? We can look at this as looking at things from a first person perspective or a third person perspective. So a third person perspective is seeing us within the world, like looking down on ourselves, being the observer of the of the observer of the observer and you can keep going back and back and back and that's what awareness is that's what consciousness really is but let's get to that in a second but the key to all of this is perception like what do you perceive to be true what do you perceive to be real it's all perception so perception if we define it is the process by which we interpret and make sense of the information that our senses so sight hearing touch taste and smell receive from the environment around us. So that's the first key. The second key is to understand that everything operates from frequency, energy, and vibration. Like we talked about, Nikola Tesla said this uh, many, many years ago. So everything is frequency. Let's go a little bit deeper into that. Like even your thoughts have a frequency, your feelings, your emotions have a frequency. You as a whole have a frequency that you're operating from. Love is a frequency. Anger is a frequency. Hate is a frequency. Words have a frequency, right? All of these things have different vibrations and frequencies. Even this, this, this table that this computer is on right now, and this camera has a frequency, all of it. And this can be looked at, if we dive into emotions for a second, we can look at this from the map of consciousness, which I've talked about many times in this channel. The map of consciousness shows us that each and every emotion has a different frequency attached to a different vibration. So when we're in fear and anger and doubt and guilt and shame, we're in a survival state, a very low and dense state of frequency, vibrating slower than we would if we were at a higher frequency, for example. Which means that that shapes our perception. It's how we perceive the information around us is going to be based on our frequency. So if I'm in a state of fear, everything around me is going to be seen through that filter of fear. I'm going to see everything from a fearful perspective. I'm going to be afraid to do one thing, afraid to start a project, afraid to collaborate with people, afraid to do anything. But if I'm coming from a state of willingness, which is higher up, or a state of joy, or peace, these are the things that are going to allow me to perceive reality in a completely different way. Think of it this way. How many times have you went to a party or went to an event or something like that and you felt in a great mood? You were so excited to be there. Everybody was chatting and you felt like everybody was having a great time. Why? Because you were having a great time. 
you felt like you were in flow, you're having great conversations with people. It's just nice to be there. It's all good. But then you go to an event. Maybe you, you said you would go with a friend or maybe you said you'd go to something, but you're not really feeling it. You're feeling a bit tired. You're feeling a bit like life's pulling you down a little bit. And you kind of feel like, oh, everybody's, everybody's kind of in a bad mood here. Everybody's kind of like not really on this, this good vibe, but that's only your perception. You are projecting your perception into the world based on how you feel in your internal state of vibration and frequency, which means that you are experiencing an entirely different reality than the person beside you that may be operating from a different state of being. Two people, same event, same experience, completely different perception, completely different experience. So it comes from the emotions that we feel. So that's one section of it, but also our thoughts have frequencies. Our words have frequencies. And if we look at the law of attraction, you attract what you are. You don't attract what you want, you attract what you are. So if your thoughts, your behaviors, your actions, your emotions are not in alignment with the thing that you want, then you do not receive that because you're not operating at the same frequency. You get more of what you already are. So if you live in survival and you live in fear and you live in doubt, then you will constantly attract more things that are similar to that frequency. And until you break through that and raise up by mastering your mind, your emotions, your thoughts, your actions, your words, and everything that comes with that, you will continuously live the same reality over and over and over and over again. So perceptions are represented by frequencies. Okay. So if your perception of your self identity and self image and how you feel about yourself, is I'm powerless, I'm not good enough, I'm not worthy, okay? What you really do is you live in a state of fear, really. You're at a lower state of vibration emotionally, okay? And you may even feel shame for who you are because for some reason you have adopted the belief that you're not good enough for some reason. Where'd you get that from? Where do we get these things from? Who made us feel that way? Who, who, led, who led us to believe that to be true? And we'll get into belief in just a minute, but that perception holds a certain frequency. And then you are interacting with the infinite field of information and possibility in the quantum field around you from that limited perception. And this perception will act as a filter for the information that you receive around you. And you will always get back the frequency that you put out into the world. And then it becomes like this self-fulfilling prophecy where you just confirm your own frequency. You confirm your own perception. So for example, right, you put out into the world, like, I don't deserve, I don't, I'm not worthy. And you put that out into the world, that feeling, right? You may not consciously think it, but you'll feel it. And you put that vibration out and then you get that back. It comes back to you. You get people who don't treat you right. You get people who take advantage of you. You get you don't get the opportunities that you want because emotionally and from a state of vibration and frequency, that's what you emit out into the world. So you get that back to you, right? It becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy where you're like, I'm not worthy. And then the universe and everything around you confirms that. And you're like, see, told you I wasn't worthy. And you just confirm it. But the problem is that we, sometimes we don't understand that we've actually chosen that subconsciously we have to just bring it to the surface to be able to, to flip it your perception and self-identity forms beliefs that you believe to be true about your reality and it's the same for like when you're comparing yourself to other people or any element of judgment okay belief is formed where you think you know i'm so poor compared to this person on instagram who's rich and has all these cars and all these things therefore i must be poor in comparison to this other person. So you put out this frequency of I'm not good enough and I'm poor and I'm poor because I keep looking at these other people and I'm poor compared to this person. So therefore your reality reflects back to you all the things that confirm this belief. You have this thing as part of your mind, which is the reticular activating system, which finds all the things that you believe should be in your reality. You keep believing that you, sh you are poor compared to this person that you're comparing yourself to. Your reality will constantly show you why that's true. And you'll find it because you're looking for it subconsciously. 
you're looking for reasons to prove you're right. Which is pretty wild because you're the one creating it. You're the one creating it. So you end up manifesting a life where your perception and belief of I'm powerless and I'm not good enough is 100% true. And I lived here for a long time. I lived here for a long time. This is why I studied this stuff. But the beautiful thing with this is that there's always another side. And it works the opposite way. Like we have control over this. And when we remind ourselves that we are infinite consciousness and awareness, and our body is simply the vehicle for this earth experience, we change our perception and self-identity. And at least we knock that first domino. This is why spirituality is the basis of everything. It's the basis of everything. We start to see that we're here for a short period of time, living and learning through 3D world around us. And we experience it as consciousness within the human vehicle. That perception is unlimited. It's expansive. It's infinite. That's a perception. Compared to, I'm powerless. I'm just here, a human, in this human body, and life is hard. And I don't know why I'm here. It's just, that's a perception. But it's also a perception to look at, I'm infinite consciousness and awareness. I'm expansive. I am unlimited. That is operating from an elevated state of frequency. It's a, it, again, it holds a frequency. Both those things do. This holds a higher frequency. It just does. It's a higher state of being. If we look at the map of consciousness, it's the same thing. It's higher up on the scale. And when you're coming from a higher state of frequency, it's because you're coming from a place of neutrality or a place of, a place of love, a place of peace. Why? Because you remember that you are infinite awareness and consciousness within the human vehicle. You are unlimited as a soul and only limited by the bounds of the physical world that we live in, in terms of like gravity, right? We're not saying that you can just start flying. Like you are limited as a human being, but as a soul, you are unlimited. And then it's just being unlimited within the bounds of physical reality. So an expanded frequency means that you have a completely new life experience within the quantum field of possibility. You receive new information that was always there. You just never opened yourself up to receive it. And the self-fulfilling prophecy that we talked about, that loop, starts again. And you start to say to yourself, well, okay, well, what if I am infinite awareness and consciousness and abundance and love? And you start emitting that out into the world, even if you don't believe it just yet. You start putting that out into the world. What do you think you get back? Proof. Proof in your reality. You start to find those things. You reprogram your subconscious mind. The universe reflects that back to you. And then the journey then is just maintaining that frequency, which is the healing journey. It is the mastery of self, the mastery of your mind, the mastery of your emotions. All you're doing is holding a higher frequency. That's the cheat code, because that will reflect back to you. You're attracted to certain people online or whether they have money or status or any of these things that we think are important. You're attracted to them because of the frequency that they hold. You're attracted to money because of the abundance. We think that money equals abundance, but you have to feel abundant first before you receive a large amount of money. Because you attract it. You don't get money and then all of a sudden you feel abundance. It just doesn't work like that. I thought it did for a very long time. It doesn't work like that. And this is really like the spiritual awakening process. So cool. It's a spiritual awakening process of understanding who you are. And you begin with noticing like amazing synchronicities in your life, you know, lucky opportunities, increasing your income, attracting new and better relationships and friendships. And I've seen this in my own life and it blows my mind still to this day. The things that can come into your life randomly just because of the frequency that you hold or the intention that you set I'm not saying that i'm some guru and have it all figured out i absolutely don't i'm on this journey just as much as anybody else but I mean, some incredible things can happen in your life you become magnetic you become a magnet 
for the life people opportunities that you want that are at the same level of the frequency that you're holding that's where really like the law of attraction really comes from even though i don't necessarily use that term very much but it's you're becoming magnetic so perception that we talked about is the dictator of our lives because our perception is the thing that's going to allow us to receive information and if we're not receiving the information that is going to serve us and allow us to expand then our perception is off but we are the ones controlling it that's what we need to realize and remember there's a great quote from from adam watts without the brain the world is devoid of light heat weight solidity motion space time or any other imaginable feature all these phenomena are interactions and transactions of vibrations with a certain arrangement of neurons in other words everything is a construct of the mind it decodes waveforms and creates these illusions that we see as reality now let's look at the illusion of time this is an interesting one as well because if we look at a watch for example a watch is a creation made by humans to make sense of of time why we, that's why we created it but the only thing that has has ever existed and that will ever exist is the now moment right here right now everything else is an illusion of really the decoding process of the mind everything else is an illusion because the thing is we we have a mind that stores things like a library it's almost like a google drive folder all of our memories feelings emotions thoughts behaviors perceptions uh understandings of the world things that we learn like everything is stored in there massive massive folder and library of experiences and again everything holds a certain frequency which means all of these memories hold a certain frequency as well and if all of these memories hold a certain frequency then that means that past memories or past things that we've experienced that hold a negative charge which is a negative frequency that holds that in place that means that these past illusions in our mind of memories that we were experiencing in the present that are now replaying in our minds because we're focused on the past that we think is real but really we're just re-experiencing the past in the present those things hold a negative charge and if we don't balance those things out they will dictate our perception of the future which means that we will not see opportunities we will see things from a skewed perspective and a broken lens we will not see clearly reality that is happening before us so the illusion of time is that there's a past there's a present and a future it's like you look at a movie you start at the beginning of the movie you get to the middle of the movie and then the end of the movie but if you think about it this way that whole movie existed before you got to the start you got to the middle or you got to the end the whole thing was already there it's one big reel just one moment and when we were experiencing the past we were in the present and we when we will be experiencing the future we will also be in the present and you're also in the present right now and if you think about the past you're thinking about the past and recreating it in the future because you're thinking about it in the present moment and when you live in the future you live in the sea of infinite possibilities which can be good if you're building a vision and a mission and a direction for your life for sure but when you live there it's just anxiety because it's infinite possibilities and you're not there yet you're here and you're not here because you're there <laughs> so everything is always just happening in the now moment it's the illusion of time all you have is right now but like we talked about in the beginning the big question with all of this is that why isn't this knowledge widespread why isn't it everywhere well think of it this way wouldn't it make sense for the people who are driven by power and control to go ahead and understand this information or find sources to understand this information and then create a society where they control your perception instead of you what if they could manipulate your mind to decode reality in a certain way so that you think that you're the one seeing it and you may not know that you're creating it but you're the one experiencing it and you think it's coming from you you think it's truth you think it's reality and then go off and manipulate you so well into thinking that you're powerless that you're not worthy 
that you're not good enough, that you're not good looking enough, that you're not strong enough. And then you form a deep belief in the reality that you find yourself in right now. That it is true. Even though it suits them more than you. Would that, would that be so crazy to think about? Well, this is where the idea of the matrix really comes in. Would that be so crazy? Who knows? But the thing is, what we do know is that we live in a society that is based on lack and scarcity and limitation, right? And we didn't decide that ourselves. You know, where did those thoughts come from? Where did those beliefs come from? That there's a lack of things, a lack of opportunities, a lack of money, a lack, lack of all these things. Like, where, where did we come up with this? Why do we believe it so deeply? Where was that programmed into us? Like really it's systematically structured to keep the truth about reality from us and to keep us believing that we are powerless, we can't do things, we're not worthy, it's impossible, etc. And from the shadows, our perceptions are really being formed and manipulated through the media, you know, through these narratives that are shared online that form our perception of who we are forgetting about who we truly are and how powerful we really are. And this shapes our experience within the 3D world that we call physical. But we have a choice to rise. We have a choice to rise up. We have a chance to realize that we are in control. And when we realize that we are in control, it's about going on the journey of self-mastery. The journey of raising in consciousness and the journey of being an active creator of our reality because we're always creating it but being an active participant in that is the key and that's going on this journey so with all of this being said like everything is just information interacting with other information decoding itself at every moment and whoever controls information controls perception and perception leads to certain behaviors. So by being here, watching this video right now, you're accessing information that will change the course of your life forever, if you choose it. And when you update your information, and you ask those deeper questions, and you go on that journey of self mastery, and you master your mind and emotions, you change your perception. And when you change your perception, you change your reality. And now that we're aware, it's about the active implementation of this knowledge and committing to that path. So remember, the first key is perception. Everything that you're experiencing right now and how you see the world, how you see, how you see yourself and everything within reality right now is based on your perception. Your perception is gonna be formed by your self-image, your worldview, the past events that have happened in your life, the charges and the frequencies that those things hold, and a state of consciousness and the state of vibration that you're currently operating from on a day to day basis. That's going to allow you to experience certain things in a certain way. It's going to form beliefs and stories that are going to lead into you experiencing the world in a certain way. So your perception is extremely important. And you have to question the stories and the beliefs and all these things that can be limiting to you in so many different ways if you allow them to be. So your perception is going to be the key to all of this. It's going to be how you receive information from the quantum field. Because the abundance that you're looking for is right in front of you. The power that you're looking for is right in front of you. It's always right in front of you. But do you see it? Can you actually receive that? And if you're not receiving it, it's because your frequency and vibration is not in alignment with it. There's something blocking your perception. Now this could be a variety of things. This is why the, the mind can be complex. But it usually comes back to limiting stories, limiting beliefs, past paradigms that may not be serving you, stories and path of past events and things that hold a negative charge that are skewing your lens of what is truly true about your belief of who you truly are. 
So if anything, borrow my belief in you. Borrow the belief that I believe in you and that you are worthy, you are capable, you are powerful if you choose to be. You are abundant, you are loved, you are strong, you are powerful if you choose to be. We always have a choice. We choose our beliefs. And we can tell ourselves a story that it has to be so much more complicated and so much harder than that. But it doesn't have to be. It can be a choice. And the second key is frequency. Which is directly tied to this. How are you operating frequency-wise on a day-to-day -day basis? Like, what is your vibration? What are you emitting out into the world? Are you coming from a place of fear and doubt and negativity? And spreading that into the world around you, coming from a victim mentality, thinking that the world's against you, thinking that you're powerless, because the, all of those things and the thoughts that those things are connected to and the emotions that those things are connected to are all emitting a certain frequency that are likely out of alignment with the life that you truly want, the partner you want to attract, the business that you want to create, the clients that you want to work with, the opportunities that you want to attract, the money and the income that you want. Until you align your frequency with those things, they will constantly feel like they're further away from you. And this is the journey. This is the journey. It's a journey of mastery. It's a journey of self-mastery. It's raising in levels of consciousness. It always comes back to this foundation of peace. That when you raise your levels of consciousness and you operate from a higher state of being, you come from a place of love and service and understanding and seeing the world as this playground for you to learn lessons and see them all as growth opportunities. There's nothing that can stop you. There's nothing that can stop you. Perception and frequency. We covered a lot in today's video. I want to know your thoughts. What are you going through? What are you thinking about down below? Let me know in the comments. I want to hear from you. What did you learn? What are your biggest takeaways? Let's go on this journey, man. Let's do it. See you guys in the next video. This is Jordan. Catch you soon.